I'm thrilled to be able to tell you this is week 20. 20 weeks we've been doing this study in 1 Corinthians. But it also thrills me to tell you what God has opened the door for us to do. And that is to, to have the ability to, to reach hundreds of thousands of people through a, a organization that puts tablets in the uh, local and, and state and, and national jails. I mean, all over the planet, God is, is, is putting his word out through this podcast, but we've been given an opportunity to, to do it nationwide in the United States through an organization that puts tablets in jails and prisons all over the country and to be able to upload our, our, our Thursday night services. We're doing this in him scripture study in our Thursday night services for the people that get out of the local jails here and, and the church people that want to come in and, and, and meet with us. We do that on Thursday nights and we, we film this and that way when, when we, 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 we raise the money to do that, it's going to cost right now starting off. It's going to cost $1,500 a month to upload these services. And I'm sure this is a small space because I, they charge by, by the space on their servers. So if you're putting a whole lot of content up, they're going to charge more. But for $1,500, that's their base cost for us to start putting these, these, these studies that we're doing at the church, doing on the podcast, well, to put them up so that right now they're t- they're reaching six hundred thousand inmates, and and just just in a few weeks or months they're going to be able to put that many more uh, inmates uh, to be able to be reached because they're putting more tablets into circulation nationwide. They're talking about doing it here in Bradley County to be able to put those tablets in Bradley County. And oh, I thank God. That, that what the, the leaps and bounds this ministry's taken over just the last few weeks because God's working. He's working. So I want to encourage you, pray about supporting that. So pray, pray about supporting this ministry to reach, when it's all said and done, when they get everything going, to reach over 1.2 million inmates nationwide in the jails. Now you say, well, that's a whole lot. You know, that's a whole lot of money per per uh, month just to get that done. And, you know, I, I done some figuring on it. I just, I, I knew somebody would say that, so I, I done some figuring on it. And you divide $1,500 by 1. 1.2 million inmates, you know what that is? The math on that says we can reach eight inmates with one penny. Eight inmates all over this nation for a cent. So can you imagine what a dollar's going to do? It thrills me to know this and understand this. That's it, to reach 1.2 million inmates. And I want I want to ask you, pray about pray about supporting this because God wants to do big things in this nation through his word, and that's what we've been called to do is give his word away. So pray about what what you, God would have you to do to sow into this project with us. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to know and understand the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God had for them. And and I want that. That's the reason I do his prayers is because I want the world to realize that. I want the world to come to understand, to, to, to know and realize the love, the mercy, the grace, and the goodness that God has for them. Oh, I thank God. For, for for God's word to show us and, and guide us and help us to realize and understand just how much he cares. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich 
and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 1.15 says, or, or 3.14 says, rather, uh, it says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power, at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that I see and hear and feel that love every day of my life. You say, well, how do you do that? I do it through his word. I, when I read these scriptures and I, I understand what God is saying to us, that he wants to be part of our lives. He wants to make us strong, wants to make us confident in who we are in him. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the vessel, the light that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 19. We've been touching on this biggest part of the week. And, and I want to finish this week out. With 1 Corinthians 12, 19, it says, if, if they were all one member, where were the body? Now, what we've been talking about, the, the, the members of the body of Christ, the church, and how we, we uh, are put together. And, you know, we've been talking about God's gave us a place, and, and he put, he's given us a job to do. And, you know, a lot of people think that, that doing things are are doing little things uh, for for a uh, to further the kingdom of God. The little things that's done around a church or a ministry that that, it, that don't mean a whole lot. But it means you you just have no idea. I mean, if you're not realizing what this is talking about here, if you're not seeing the the uh, importance of me being where I'm supposed to be. And, and the people that, that, that help this ministry, that, that work in this ministry, that, that sow into this ministry, that they are in, the, in, in their place. And, and that this, this ministry wouldn't work right if people weren't where they're supposed to be. Now listen, now let, me, let me read what uh, 1 Corinthians twelve nineteen says in the New Living Translation. It says, how strange a body would be if it only had one part. What we were talking, what we've been talking about, you know, if everybody was a hand or an ear or a nose or, or a mouth, you know what I'm talking about? How strange that would look. It wouldn't look right. Think about it. Really, it wouldn't work right. And it wouldn't work that way. The Amplified Classic says, but if the whole were all a single organ, where would the body be? If we were all made into the same thing, the church could not operate. If everybody was ministers, it could not operate. 
If, if everybody was doorkeepers, it would not operate. I mean, really, think about it. We've all got a place, and it wouldn't work th- that way if everything was the same. If if we were all one member, in other words, we were all the same part of God's of God's body, God's church. There's people that have been, I'm talking about instrumental in my life that that I'll never forget. I'll never, I'll never forget a, 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 a few men that have really been just, I'm talking about a, a big help to me. I'm talking about leading men and pointing me in the right direction and just loving me. I mean, there's been people in my life that, that you just, I just can't put it in words. I had a great aunt and a grandmother. My great aunt was my, my grandpa, my grandpa's, my papa's sister. And I can remember to this day, uh, her with, within walking di- distance of her home, you walk right up the street and turn left onto King Street and walk right up there and New Liberty Baptist Church was up there on the left. And I can remember her taking me by the hand on the main road, which was Blackburn Road, and and I can remember her us walking up the street and turning left onto King Street, and then she would turn me loose. And I can remember following her up that street to church. And I don't know how old I was. I wasn't in school. I mean, I was that young. But I can remember things like that. I can remember my grandmother the love that she get, gave me. My mama was a a wonderful person. I I just I I I can't put it in words. The love, the unconditional love that she gave me. Letty was the same way. Way my great aunt, but my grandmother was just a, a an instrument that God used to show me love, to show me mercy and grace and and love. And if it wasn't for some people in my life like that, I wouldn't have had much of a childhood. I've got a a cousin, a second, I guess she's my second cousin. She's my great aunt's daughter. And uh, she, when I was young, I'm talking about from the time from adolescence up, you know, young, young, up until I was Married up until I was married, I, she was such a part of my life. But you know, if it wasn't for her, you know, I wouldn't have had much of a childhood at all. Cause she'd come and get me, and and I spent weekends, a lot of time at her house. I mean, she was she's uh, she's probably fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years older than I am. But she treated me like she was my own. Like she was, you know, I was hers and fed me and, and took me places and took me to Florida. And it just, you know, you just wouldn't, you, you'd think, my goodness, really? Somebody would do that. Yes, she did. She, she knew her place in my life. She knew wh- where she was supposed to be in my life. And when I think about the people that have been that instrumental to me, I thank God because there has been there's been a a handful of people in my life that I wouldn't take a million dollars for because they were instrumental in seeing seeing me through my young age, my adolescent years. And I thank God I thank God for my parents. My parents provided for me and and uh, just done a lot for me in my in my uh, early life, but but I can look at people; they all had their place. They all worked towards my good. I mean, Letty, my great aunt, she she was the greatest. I mean, I I get to talking about people like that, and I'm I'll cry on you because. 
I've had people in my life that have just loved me regardless of where I was at. My wife says they spoiled you. And maybe they did. But they had an impact on me that I'll never forget. You say, well, what is this turned into? This is turned into a podcast that will tell you that you have a place in God's kingdom and the kingdom won't work correctly. The church won't work correctly until you get in your place, till you find your place. That may be that person that opens the door to the to the church every day or the or the the woman that that spent her life in the nursery of the of the church taking care of the babies or the Sunday school teacher that that gave their life the man or woman that gave their life to teach people the word of God and to teach people what Thus saith the word of God. You have no idea how you being out of place affects the people around you and the and the kingdom affects the people that are uh, I'm talking about depending on you. And that's depending on you doing your job so that they can find the same Savior that you found. Do you follow me? If we all were an ear, the body wouldn't look right. It wouldn't work right. And I'm telling you, if they were all one member, where were where were the body? In other words, what would the body be? How strange a body would be if it were only one part. Listen, the the church is made up of a lot of different places. And a lot of different parts, a lot of different different operating parts that 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 has to work together to see the common goal, and that is to see the Word of God, to see God Himself magnified in this world, so that the the lost people in this world can find Him, can find Him. He'll give you. He'll give you everything you need to find your place, and then he'll help you to operate in that place from now on if you'll let him. Won't you do that today? Won't you find the place that is yours in the kingdom of God, in his church? Get in that place and 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 take root and live in the place where God wants you to be because I promise you, you can impact people in this world that you will never forget. I've got one more that that I, I talk about some. Talked to her here a while back. She was my fourth grade teacher, I think. Patsy Plumley was her name. And she we, we spent a lot of time in her class, we'd stay after school. She hauled us home. She's always had a place in my heart, and she done so much to to help us kids. There was a bunch of us in the, in that uh, in that class that she treated like they were that we were her children. And I thank God for people that knows their place in life. and And I pray today that you find yours because. The kingdom of God, the church, won't work correctly unless you're in your place. Find it. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't work that way. Find your place in God's kingdom and live in it. Cooperate in it and work towards a common goal of seeing people's lives born again. Now listen, you say, I'd love to be part of that. You can be. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. If you've never been born again, it's as easy as taking one step, putting it in front of the other. Jesus died for your sins. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth 
if you will confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you believe in God today, if you believe Jesus done what he said he done and, and was raised on the third day, God raised him on the third day to justify you, but you've never been born again, you're one, one step away from being born again. And that is, if you've never confessed Jesus as Lord, to do it today. Do it today. Make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Make him Lord and Savior. Make him King of your life today. Confess him by faith. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast, and I want to encourage you to go back to June the 21st of 2021 on this podcast and listen to every one of these podcasts from from there forward, you can go all the way back to the beginning and download them and listen to them. But we started this in him scripture study, and this has turned into something that that is just, I'm talking about touching people's hearts, changing their lives. I see it. I get letters and, and comments and emails from people around that, that hear and, and are changed because of it. Go back and get a hold of that. It's the-prodigalson.com. Get in contact with this ministry. Send us your prayer request. Tell us what God is doing in your life through this ministry. If you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away all over this planet free of charge. And partners, you're helping us do that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.